Hello and welcome to Coxie's Picks and today we're going to be looking at these genuine police handcuffs. They are anything but, they are more of an adult toy. They're made in Taiwan and they're missing a few safety features which means they're great for learning how uh, handcuffs work and how to pick them. One of the things is, is that these particular cuffs are missing an indent here and a slotted groove across the bow. Now that was designed to stop you being able to pull the bow apart and then lift it through. So ideally you jam something in there, force this part of the actual thing known as the double strand that would be forced away which would lift this off the pulls and then you could pull it free. Now you would need absolute legendary strength to do that or a mechanical advantage but modern day handcuffs they have an indent there and a groove along the bow. So this particular set does not so that means that we have the cheaper version Based on a design in the 80s, so they're kind of cool. So you've got a double lock via a push pin here. So let's just show that in working. Like so. All right, and the double lock is then reset from the key, turning the opposite way that you would think. So it goes around. It reaches the 45 degree point here and it indents with a double lock bar. You'll hear a loud click. And that's it, it's reset to get the key back out. Turn the bow around and up we are. And that's the double lock removed. Now to get the single lock done, all you need to do is indent the key 45 degrees this way, you'll feel some tension and then that's it, you pull to a full 90 and you've pulled the pulls clear. Now in this particular set there are two versions, there's one with a single um, pull and there's also one with the what I call a pseudo double pull. Now if you look inside there you see it looks like it's a gnarly security device but unfortunately it's not because there's only a single spring inside, which means that, sorry, just move the camera. If I action on either one of the springs, both will depress. So there is two pulls acting as one, which means we can take advantage of that. Notice that we've got no anti-shim in the front, nor in the rear, or on the sides. So that means that if, the sink, if you're able to defeat the double lock, you can actually shim quite easily out of these cuffs. Now they are susceptible to the whack attack. Um, however, due to manufacturing, I highly recommend you don't try that because the bar inside can have um, ridges. It's quite poorly made. Um, to get the bar out, what you need to do is drop this pin out and then that's it. You can get access to the working parts and you can see inside. If I've got a photo of the innards, I will put it around about here uh, so you can see what I mean. Now. Let's talk about the exploits. Well, obviously we know that it's a handcuff, so it's not a very complex lock. And this particular one has got a very wide keyway. Well, how do we know it's a wide keyway? If we take a standard handcuff key and I place it in, look at the slop. So when I show you on the side, you'll see what I mean. So look at the slop that it can move. That means that we have a big wide keyway, which is kind of cool because that allows us a variety of tools to get in there. What do I mean by that? Well, we can utilize uh, this is just a broken pick with a straight edge. I'm a massive fan of straight edge picking. So you can go in on the top and then just literally unhook it just like so. So we know that we can use a lock pick shocker to pick locks. Now, one of the cool things about handcuffs is when you're actually using any ad hoc tool to try and get out. So we're going to use a thin piece of metal. Right? And this is otherwise known as a shim. And what you need to do is we're going to do it from the front of the cuff and you're going to go between the bow and the body. What you're going to do is you're going to insert like so. You're going to push until you feel some resistance. You're going to lightly push on the bow. And what this does is it puts the pull in just, just a fraction and allows us to slide the metal work over. So you push and push. It's kind of like a, a double edge thing. And when you're wearing it, it is kind of funny because you've got to imagine that you're pushing on the bow at the same time so it's kind of tricky but once you get the knack done whilst you're wearing it I mean this is called bench testing and um, when you're wearing it it's slightly different so you're pushing down on the on the uh, shim push down on the pull so like so and away it comes and that's a commercially available shim you can get those in various places um, I'm not a fan of carrying a commercially available shim around because it kind of screams I want to get out of handcuffs. Um, so you need to learn how to do this with ad hoc materials. I would suggest that you can do it with Coke cans, uh, paper clips, and obviously you can do it with your lock picks as well. So what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to attack these from the rear using uh, my guinea pig lock pick. Right, and as you can see, it's a guinea pig because I wrap it around various things. 
You're going to go in through the back. There's a huge opening in the back, so this means you can use a lot larger, thicker tools. So if, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the front, it's quite close. In fact, the gap's about 0.3 mil, which means that a lot of tools don't fit in the front. So I'll just prove that now by putting this lock pick in the front. It doesn't fit, which is a shame because that'd be kind of cool. But at the back, lo and behold, look at that. I can fit it all the way down. When you're doing a back shim, you're going to push as hard as you can till it's in place. And you've actually ratchet can straight up against the pools there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to lightly push away. So you're going to go back towards the double band, uh, to, towards the double strand, which then pushes down on the pools. Ooh. Try and do this with two hands there, shall we? So we're going to go set the cuff, end with the cuff, lightly push, hold everything in place. Fiddly, but I'll get it done. Trust me, I will. And there we go, done. The problem is, is that as soon as you get to a certain point, this will want to spring up and out and away. But it's not a problem when you're wearing them because that will impact into your wrist. So make sure that your tool isn't sharp. Next thing I want to discuss is I want to discuss my favorite EDC of all time. This is the Parker Pen. All right, why is it my favorite EDC? Because they lovingly designed a handcuff tool into the pen clip. There are videos on my channel on showing how to do that. Um, but what you end up with is this right and that is a flat edge straight edge with a very nice curved indent which is kind of what we need it wraps around the key post and so what we can do is we can set the double lock like this we're going to take our parker place it onto the side so it's now in the upright position lean grab and undo it's very quick so it's going to go in lean twist that's it almost like a key then to get the pulls, you're going to hold it in the horizontal and then just catch both working parts. That is quite simply the easiest way to pick these. Now, I've discussed side shimming before and what I mean by that is there's a tolerance problem with handcuffs and different brands have different issues. And as you can see, the bone moves. Now this isn't just because these are cheap ones, this even affects peerless. But what we can do is we can take our tool, we can reach down the side he says confidently and there we go there we are so you can reach down the side and you go into action against the pulls once you feel them so because this is a double spring uh, sorry a double pull single spring we only need to find one of the pulls and lo and behold look we've been able to get the cuff clear which is kind of a unique way of doing it um, it does open up some opportunities for using other ad hoc tools like a paper clip for example that you can just get a paper clip into that void there um, I'm just show you just like that so you can see it moves and you just find out which side is the easiest way of doing it it is a bit fiddly um, but there we go now speaking of paper clips my favorite thing for a demonstration in the bar on how to escape is that good old movie trope can you get out with a paper clip well the answer is yes if you're tactical with it so what you want to do is you want to bend it into an s like so and you're going to work and make this piece of metal weaken. And as we go like this, eventually it will snap. I'm using little motions because as you'd be in the cuffs, um, you wouldn't have much motion to go. And there you are, you ended up with two tools, which is kind of handy because we've got two locks. So if we bend it, we can prove it uh, on the other side as well. So let's we'll just set the double lock on this, just like this. And then we're going to make the final stage of our tool, which is we're going to give ourselves a handle. Now, you may find it easier to bend this up so it's more straight, so that you've got more leverage to be able to reach the cuff. But because we're not on the bench, I'll just do it with 90 degrees. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of that double lock. And the way you do that is you're going to take this hooked end, place it in, a, in this corner here, and sweep across. Once you've sweeped across, you'll hear the click. Kind of missed. Let's try again. Always when I'm on camera, doing the final bit. So we're in and down. Now it would be the one time that I can't get the double lock off with a paper clip. Bear with me.
let me just use the straight edge. There we go. Okay. So as you can see, I cheated a little bit and I used the straight edge through just to force it. Now that's because this particular side, I should have done it on the other side, it's got that manufacturing defect that I said and it's quite stiff to go. But there are two ways of doing it. Like I said, you could use the hook or the straight edge. Now we're going to move the pulls down. Using the hook is easier because you're going to go in and sweep in a, like this. So you're going to go up and around motion and sweep. So you're going to catch the pull. Either one will do. He says, again, just bent the paper clip. There we go. And it undoes. Simple as. Now, if you're like me and you prefer using the straight edge, I find it's even quicker because the straight edge I can direct in, get the pulls and flick up. It's down to personal preference when using a paper clip. Me, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of straight edge because when the keyhole gets smaller, the, the avenue for attack gets smaller. So that's why I use the straight edge. So there we are. We've discussed some of the major flaws with these ones and some of the exploits that are available. Uh, I highly recommend that if you are learning how to pick handcuffs, you pick up a set of these. They are very cheap. Um, and because they're so cheap, you don't mind if you break them. You can even take them apart, like I discussed before, by just dropping this pin out with a punch, right? And uh, then you'll be able to look at the mechanisms inside. Okay, so there we are. That is the cheap Taiwanese genuine police handcuffs. Uh, apologies for the long video, but there was quite a few exploits to go through. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.